Hey guys, welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Before I introduce my guest today, I just want to give a quick shout out to my sponsors at Manscaped. Father's Day is around the corner, and if you haven't bought that special guy in your life something, you want to consider the Beard Hedger Pro Kit. It comes with everything that you need to craft your signature beard style. Go to manscaped.com and use code HOLLY for 20% off plus free shipping. All right, so my guest today first learned about cuckolding seven years ago and immediately knew that she found her calling. She is now a cuckold dress podcaster, runs a cuckolding matchmaking service, and is an outspoken advocate for cuckold relationships. Welcome, Venus Cuckoldress. How are you? Hi, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me on the show today. Oh, of course. No, you are so welcome. And I'm so glad that we could finally make this happen. I know we originally were talking about it ages ago, but um, but we are here today. And I'm so excited to talk to you about this very specific niche that you work in. And I guess before we start, can you just explain to members of my audience who may not know what cuckolding actually is? Yes. And I love the opportunity to be able to explain this um, because it's often very much misunderstood. So cuckolding, in my opinion, is uh, a one-sided open relationship where she gets to have these sexual experiences with other men and, um, and he is faithful to her. He doesn't have those sexual experiences with other women and he really celebrates her for that, um, that ability to be so sexually free and they both love it that way he in return she gives him this gift of being involved in some way and so most people think cuckolding is where he's watching his wife um have sex with another man and that can be one part of it but it's certainly not cuckolding it is the stereotype (laughs) but there's so much more to it than that and um it can't it may or may not involve um teasing I like to call it teasing and not humiliation um but it may or may not involve any kind of like power exchange it's basically when it all comes down to it in my opinion that one-sided loving relationship where she gets to have this gift of sexual exploration however she wants that to look like and he completely celebrates her for that and they are both so fulfilled by that um so that's how that's been my experience with cuckolding and over the years that's kind of what I've you know witnessed in a, in a lot of cases sure there's a huge spectrum of cuckolding like it can be really fucking kinky and it can be really fucking tame <laughs> but um and that's been my my experience with what it is Can you explain to us like a little bit about what that spectrum looks like? Like what looks like a tame cuckolding relationship? What maybe looks like an in-between and what looks like a pretty kinky cuckolding relationship? Yeah. So on one end of the, I guess you'd call it the tame end, it, it, in my opinion, is like hot wifing kind of stag vixen thing where, um, you know, she's, there's, there isn't any kind of like teasing or sexual denial or um uh, any kind of like I don't know I uh, those kind of things and but on the other end <laughs> it can be really extreme it could be she does sexually deny her partner um and it could be a little bit it could be a lot but there is sexual denial there and it could be like all the time sexual denial which I know some couples who do participate in that aspect of it but it could also be meaning like uh hardcore like bdsm a lot of um like chastity play and stuff like that incorporated into it and the power exchange being quite extreme on that one end so it is literally those two ends and then it can be like anything in between and couples kind of like you know usually start out on the tame side and then dabble a little bit into these more kind of risque things and see how it works for them kind of thing Yeah. So um, for my listeners, if you guys want to know a little bit more about hot wifing, like maybe more in depth, um, you can go watch my episode with Holly Hotwife, who explains how it works in her relationship. And with her relationship, she goes out and has sex with other men and then comes back and tells her husband about it. And he is really into hearing about her experiences with other men. But she certainly like denies him nothing. She comes home, she tells him about that experience that turns him on, and then they 
they, you know, have, you know, they become intimate with each other kind of over that excitement. She calls it, I think, uh, reclaiming, yeah. I think is what uh, she calls it. And then the other extreme version where you talked about, and maybe extreme is the wrong word, but like super kinky version is probably what a lot of you guys may have seen like cuckold porn showing just because there's a lot of like dynamic to it. So um, in a, most typical cuckolding porn, you see um, the bull, which is the guy who's having sex with the wife, having sex with her. And then there's the you know, husband or boyfriend who's usually, <laughs> because you have to fit them both in frame, is usually like on the bed with them, watching them having sex, looking very dismayed, making a lot of like exaggerated faces like, oh no, my wife's having sex with someone else. And the whole time she talks about how this other man is fulfilling her in a way that her husband never could. And then, you know, sometimes at the end, the guy like has to eat the other guy's cum. So, so that's, <laughs> So that's usually what we see in porn, and that is definitely like the kinkier side. But um, as you said, there's a there's a big spectrum and a lot of in between, which is which is super interesting. Um, do you think that cuckolding is a new phenomenon, or do you think it's always been around in some capacity, and we're just kind of hearing about it now because you know the internet and different forms of media have allowed people to explore all these different kinds of kinks and fetishes? That's such a great question. Cuckolding has been around for eons. Um, the history of it goes way, way, way back uh, it, as a shaming practice uh, for um, a, a wife who cheats on her husband. And um, But it's evolved into uh, this very kind of sexy, kind of fun kind of thing that couples can try. I've talked to a lot of people who've said, I was into this before I even knew it had a name. Like we were doing this before we even knew that other people do this. So <laughs> I think it's been around for a long time. It's just has the, the dialogue hasn't been there. It really had, I don't think was represented in porn um, very much. And then now it seems like I've heard this. A lot of swinger couples, the husband's realizing he really enjoys watching his wife more than he enjoys. He gets more satisfaction from that than from fucking other women. And so this is kind of like evolving, I think, from that community as well, and and which is great. Um, but it's wildly popular. It's amazing. And Dr. Justin Lay Miller, who did a massive study on um, American sexual fantasies, and he wrote a book, Tell Me What You Want. And he, uh, he surveyed people. It was a big survey. He, he asked people about cuckolding fantasies, and it was amazing how many guys are thinking about this and often it was something like uh, it was over over 50 percent or something like that of guys who are thinking about this often and then um only about a third of women and not as often but still that number is to me quite high <laughs> so <laughs> it's definitely popular and people are thinking about it and i do think that guys have this very visceral guys who are turned on by this anyway have this very visceral kind of reaction that is is it's hard to ignore <laughs> when you have like uh your you know hardest erection and biggest orgasm you ever had thinking about your wife sleeping with another guy that's hard to ignore so it is a very kind of um impactful kind of fantasy for them so it's hugely wildly popular i think it's just getting more and more popular yeah i mean you know you mentioned about it being you know having been around for a long time and as an English major, I can tell you that there is so many references to cuckolding in um, ancient literature. Um, in fact, I'm actually reading from um, the UB English website. Um, the term cuckold is all over medieval and early modern literature. In fact, it isn't too much of an exaggeration to say that the huge percentage of early modern human revolves around ridiculing cuckolds. Um, cuckoldry is everywhere from the Canterbury Tales to Shakespeare's sonnets and plays. So it's definitely something that we've seen, you know, happening for a long time. And I actually had a podcast with um, Dr. Eleanor Yanega, and she talked about how, you know, this was something that was very prevalent um, as, you know, a sexual device in the medieval times and how, in fact, like there was a whole thing around, you know, 
men being able to, whether or not men could even get erections to basically impregnate their wife, right? Because if you couldn't procure children, then like, what was your purpose? So, you know, woman going off to seek somebody else who could impregnate them, you know, rather than the man that they were with who, you know, was not masculine enough or something like that. So it's interesting to see how it's really been a staple in like human sexual behavior since, you know, the 13th century. I mean, from as far back as we can see it in, in literature. Yeah. Yeah. It is really amazing. And I, think like I said, I think it's just getting more and more popular. It has evolved, like I said, so much into something that's, in my opinion, really quite a beautiful kind of relationship dynamic. Yeah. I have, um, somebody, I have a fan who listens to my show and is also a member of my only fans. Hi, Ken. And, uh, he, he's really into cuckolding and he actually made this, um, he made a comparison once that I thought was really interesting um, to having like a really great car. And he's like, you know, like if you just buy this like beautiful, sexy car, you want to like let other people drive it because you want to show off your beautiful, sexy car and you want other people to appreciate this amazing thing that you have. And that's how I see cuckolding. And I thought that was a really interesting way to look at it. That is, that's exactly what makes cuckolds like the best partners ever. They're selfless. They're giving, they, they really truly love, adore, and appreciate your sexuality as a woman. And where else do we get that? Like that, you know? And so this is, like I said, a real gift that we're given, um, from our partner. And, um, in turn, it just creates this like amazing relationship that's so bonding and so trusting and so next level kind of love kind of thing. But this this stereotype that cucks are weak, that cucks are pathetic, they're doormats, they get walked all over. This is, you know, your typical porn script, right? Where they're just this de degradation, extreme humiliation, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's super fun and to fantasize and stuff like that, but it's not reality. <laughs> reality is cucks are not weak at all. They are so strong emotionally, physically, whatever, mentally strong. Like they are strong human beings. They are the best partner you could ever, ever have, in my opinion. And um, they are, they come from all walks of life. It's not like I can pick one out of a crowd, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> but they do have the most amazing qualities in that they are so giving and so selfless and they are your cheerleader of your sexuality. And that's what really kind of struck me when I met my first cuck boyfriend. Yeah. So I wanted to actually ask you, um, how were you introduced to cuckolding? Yeah. So it was, uh, pretty unexpected. I, but it's so funny because like before I met him, I knew that I wanted this, but I just didn't know it existed. So I was like, there's no way I could find any guy that would be down for this. Cause I had spent a lot of time as like a solo woman in the swingers lifestyle. So I was able to do whatever I wanted whenever I wanted with whoever I wanted. I was in demand. It was like fun times. And <laughs> so I knew, but I knew that like with swingers, there was always this, you have to meet in the middle. You have to make a lot of these rules, boundaries and limits and stuff like that. And there's all the, all this negotiation all the time. Like, are you, can I be there? Do you have to be there in the room and blah, 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 that kind of stuff. And I, like, I totally respect that, but I knew that that's not really what I wanted in my relationship. And so I was kind of depressed in that, like, I thought I would never, never meet somebody that like that. And then I met this guy on Tinder of all places. <laughs> you know, I, I, I met my husband on Tinder, so it's not that weird. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I, in my profile, I said, I don't want to be monogamous. And so I think that that kind of, he must have looked at that and thought, oh, well, maybe she'll be into this fantasy. Mm -hmm. And um, he didn't bring it up at first, but then he slowly started to bring it up. And I, I just assumed he would want the same, you know, privilege of sleeping with other women. And he, when he said no, I was kind of shocked. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? I didn't understand that one-sided, seemingly unfair part of it. I didn't get it. But then the more he talked about it, and he didn't say the word cuckold, he didn't say anything like that. He just talked about it in the language of this being open on one side for me, and that he really wanted to hear the details about my other partners. And I was like, well, that sounds fucking fun. <laughs> I can do that. And it wasn't until much later on that I really started to 
appreciate that one-sided part of it. I, and now I love and adore it, but I didn't understand it at first. And yeah, so that's how he, he was the one who introduced me to it. It was a long distance relationship that didn't um, last long term, uh, unfortunately. And then after that, I met like the most amazing partner, but unfortunately he passed away. So after that, I just took a long break. And then I was faced with having to like date in this lifestyle, which sucks. And I'm sure we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah. So you said that you, you knew that you wanted to have like a cuckold relationship, but you didn't necessarily, I think you said that you didn't necessarily know what that meant at the time. So did that mean specifically that you wanted to be with somebody who would allow you to have, you know, whatever sexual dalliances you wanted to have with other people, but he was not going to go and, and do the same. And did you not want him to go and do the same? Or like, can you explain to me like how that, what that meant for you? Yeah. So it's, it's funny. I just sat down and I thought about it one day and I was like, Hey, what do I really want for a relationship? And I closed my eyes and I literally pictured this. I w I pictured myself in this room full of people and I was like in the center and there's all of these guys like pawing at me. And I, in my mind, I just looked over at my partner who was further away looking at me and he had just this most loving, adoring smile on his face, looking at me just being so, you know, sexually wanted in that scenario. And I was like, I, that's all that happened in my mind. And I was like, oh, that'd be really nice. <laughs> But it wasn't until I met that my first cuck boyfriend that I realized, holy shit, this is a thing. And then I realized there's actually guys out there, lots of them, who who want this kind of relationship. And I was just mind fucking blown, like mind blown. And then I realized if I'm a woman, I didn't even know this was an option as a relationship. There's probably so many other women who don't know that either. And yet we could have it. If you just know that it's there. <laughs> yeah. We've seen a rise in women being the ones to suggest bringing outside partners in general into relationships. Why do you think that is? I really hope that's true. Um, I really, really, really hope that's true. Maybe there are people just being more vocal about it. Yeah, maybe it, maybe it is just a, the sexual conversations are a little bit more easy to have. I don't know, but like, I really hope that's true. I haven't not come across a lot of women who've said that they're trying to get their partner into this. They're, they do exist. They are out there. Um, and by the way, I should say cuckolding is huge in the gay community. Like <laughs> cuckolding is mm. massive in the gay community, which I think is super cool, but I just want to put that in there. But, um, yeah, so I really do hope that more women are having those conversations to bring partners into the relationship because um, I think maybe when you are in a relationship, there's some safety to that. Whereas when you're a solo woman and you're, you know, bringing in new partners and stuff like that, that's a real nerve wracking kind of thing for a lot of women. But when you, when you have the safety of that relationship and your and your your partner there to protect you, then maybe it's just easier. Yeah. So as a man, what do you think is in it for them? What do you think draws men to want to explore cuckolding? It's such a great question because a lot of people don't understand that at all. That's probably the number one question I get. Like, well, well, that seems unfair. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, she gets to go and do all of this fun, sexy stuff and he doesn't get the same privilege. Like, that doesn't make any sense. That sounds awful. That sounds mean. And what they don't understand is that there's so much in it for the guy. And first of all, like, I don't remember where I saw it, but like there are, there is a um, biochemical reaction and that happens in men where there's a flood of fucking hormones that happen when he thinks about his partner um, sleeping with somebody else. And so it's incredibly thrilling for him. And I, I listened to that um, Holly Hot Wife episode. The pizza thing is fucking, she's so wild. Like, I can't even believe that. That was so great. <laughs> <laughs> I 
the fact that that happened twice that that pizza delivery man got lucky twice is unbelievable I know it's crazy it's, but I love it so much that was so great but one of the things that struck me about what she was saying about her her relationship was that she called it edging she said her husband really likes the edging part and I thought, oh, that's, I've not heard it called that before, but that's very interesting because um, that is what I tend to call this like cuck angst, which is this real kind of like dance of emotions of nervous, of like a little fearful, of excited, of like dreading, but also really fucking turned on kind of feeling knowing that this is going to happen, that she's going to be with this other guy. And it's almost like that weird feeling it seems weird but it's it's very intense is such a draw for so many guys so she called it edging where you know in the she I think she said the week before she goes to see somebody he's all excited he's like you know all you know angst up and I I think I Cux just gets so much out of that. But then there's a compersion factor uh, as well. And she talked about that too where he just really enjoys seeing uh his wife you know, sexually enjoying herself, being fulfilled by somebody else, having her desires met by somebody else. And then the reclaiming part afterwards, I hate that word because I feel like it's like claiming a piece of furniture or something like that. But mm -hmm. the reconnecting part afterwards is hot as fuck. And she talked about that and she is right. <laughs> that is so hot. And that's what, and so going back to what we were talking about before about the spectrum and sexual denial and stuff like that. Most people think that if you're a cuck, you are sexually denied. You don't have sex with your wife or partner. That's bullshit. <laughs> That's total bullshit. There are some couples that, that, like I said, that practice that, but I think by and large, most of couples don't actually most cuckolding couples look like Holly hot wife. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so that time that you spend together afterwards is so um, amazing. It's so bonding. So that she she talked about reclaiming, but it like reconnecting or whatever is hot as shit. And I personally think like that is the most thrilling, exciting kind of experience that you could possibly want with your partner. So fuck this boring sex life shit. You could have this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it definitely adds like uh, a little bit of spice that like outside element, introducing that outside element for sure. Absolutely. So I can tell you right now that when this episode comes out, my the comments on my YouTube channel are going to be filled with guys saying what real man would allow their partner to do this. That means they're not a real man. You know, they must be emasculated. They must have all kinds of, you know, like self-image issues. What would you see say to men like that who really – couldn't possibly imagine that a man who participates in this kind of relationship could be, um, you know, like a man in the, in the sense of the word that they, they understand it. <laughs> I just laugh when I hear that kind of stuff, because I think that's, I don't know if it's rooted in, um, toxic masculinity or patriarchy. I don't really know, but there's something to that where if a man gives his wife or girlfriend or partner this gift that then makes him less of a man now think about that for a second if you're giving this gift to the person that you love it means then you are a piece of shit like that's fucking strange <laughs> if you give your partner something that is like so beautiful and so amazing and such a privilege and like it makes your relationship so much better. I don't see how that makes somebody less of a man. And I'm sure that they're thinking and tying it into this whole humiliation degradation thing. But the interesting thing is for a long time, I've always been saying that cucks are not weak. They're very strong. They're amazing human beings. My friend calls them like an evolved fucking species. Like, <laughs> and, um, and, 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 Dr. Justin Lay Miller, when he did that study, he actually told me that um, it turns out that men who have cuckolding fantasies have higher levels of self-confidence than the average person and have higher levels of self-esteem than the average person. So I was like, thank you. Fucking thank you. There it is. <laughs> like the, the research has spoken. <laughs> so I think that people just need to get rid of that fucking stereotype that they have in their head. 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting and, you know, there's so many ways that you could look at this, but this sense of ownership that people have over each other and this men specifically, you know, with the idea of like, this woman belongs to me. She not she cannot be with anybody else. Otherwise, I'm less of a man or I might lose her. I mean, there's a lot of fear rooted in those thoughts, right? Yeah. And I can say from a personal perspective, so, well, first of all, I should say I'm in a monogamous relationship and we're both very comfortable with that and that's fine for me. But I, I always find non-monogamy very interesting. My parents actually uh, practice non-monogamy and they were both swingers and they both, you know, went out and had um, – sex with other people. My mother was much more promiscuous than my father was. And he was absolutely fine with that. He was fine with her going out and having sex with other men. And I can tell you that like my father was a very confident, very self-assured man. Like he just literally, it wasn't that he was weak in any way. He just like didn't care. Like he didn't care. He wanted what was best for her. She liked to do this. And he wasn't somebody, I mean, I don't know. Look, I don't know my parents' like sex life in a lot of detail, which I'd like to keep that way. I know more than most people do about their parents' sex life. But, um, you know, I don't think it was a situation where he was like waiting for her to come home and tell him about it. And then like he would get turned on about it. It was just more like he was very comfortable in their relationship. Um, he knew that she, you know, he was the only man that she's ever loved. She says that all the time. You know, they were together for 53 years before he died a couple of months ago. And um, he just, he just didn't care and like could not get jealous. Like sometimes when they were young, I know because she's told me like she would sometimes try to make him jealous by like going off and having sex with, I don't know, you know, they went to the Playboy Mansion so she'd have sex with like celebrities and football stars and stuff like that. And he just like didn't give a shit. Like it didn't affect him in that way and it didn't affect his sense of self and, and self-confidence. So I always kind of look at their relationship and their dynamic and, you know, like it doesn't seem like a strange thing to me, even though I don't practice it in my own life. Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing. You have to have this very solid relationship to be able to do this. I mean, it requires next level communication skills, but it also, ha it requires the trust. I mean, he has to know that she, no matter what she's fun, she's going to get up to that. She's going to come back home to him and, and to have that kind of confidence in a relationship is pretty amazing. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to talk about how Venus got into this as a profession, um, the dating service that she opened for cuckoldry. And, um, if it's something that you're interested in getting into, how you might be able to explore these options with your partner. So hang tight. We'll be right back. This episode is brought to you by Blue Chew, the number one online service for treating erectile dysfunction problems. Blue Chew believes that healthcare doesn't have to be a hassle or expensive. And this is why they offer a convenient, affordable, and discreet way to get the help that you need. With Blue Chew, you can get access to a medical team trained in diagnosing and treating patients to help them achieve stronger and longer lasting erections. And if prescribed, the medicine ships directly to your house in a discreet package. Blue Chew is committed to providing access to prescription treatments made in the form, flavor, and dosage that is right for you and your lifestyle. Did you know that 40% of Americans have issues swallowing pills? This is why Blue Chew delivers their products in an easy to take, chewable form. Each tablet comes in individual packaging, so you can take them on the go wherever the fun might be. If you're ready to take back your sex life, then visit Blue Chew today. They're here to help you get the help you need without the hassle or embarrassment. And here's a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code HOLLY at checkout. Just pay $5 in shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code HOLLY to receive your first month for free. Hey guys, we are back. So Venus, you said that you knew that this was something that you wanted to experience in your personal life. How did you end up turning this into a career path? It has been such an accidental success. <laughs> really, it's a weird story, but because um, it was not purposely set out to be like that. I, After I met my first cuck boyfriend, I started blogging. I'd never read a blog before or written one before, but I just felt the need to like 
describe my experience and hopefully so that other women could be like, oh, that, that's I didn't know that existed. So I started blogging and I did that for like a couple of years. And I remember somebody asked me to be on their podcast and I was like terrified. I'm like, I'm not an expert. I don't know. And then um, so during that time, I ended up being a guest on several podcasts. I kept blogging. I was working full time in my day job, all that sort of stuff. And I was not monetizing anything at that time. And I really didn't want to. I, I just wanted to share my story. That was it. Um, and so it wasn't until I think, I don't know, four years after that, that I realized I was not, I was really not reaching women. I think my audience for the blog, I found out was like 96% men. So I was like, damn it. <laughs> I mean, it's That's great. literally I, exactly my demographic <laughs> for the show, by the way. <laughs> right? So I was just like, oh, for fuck's sakes. Like I just, where are these women? Like I need to be able to reach them. And um, not that I, you know, mind having the guys listen in or watch or listen or whatever. I like, obviously I like that, but um, I, I really wanted to reach women. So actually it was so random. Um, this guy who follows me on Twitter, I don't know him very well. He just sent me a DM and he was like, you should do a podcast. And I was like, uh, no, that sounds hard. And then he sent me this, like, how to start your own podcast link. And I was <laughs> like, like, wow, the oh. bar of entry is actually very low. Yeah, I'm reading <laughs> Anyone could have a podcast. Yeah, I was like, I might be able to do this. But I'd been a guest on other people's shows, so I knew there was, like, equipment and shit like that, and I didn't know how to do that. So thank God for YouTube taught me everything I needed to know. <laughs> oh my but, God, amen to that. Yeah, but... If, uh, five days later, after I decided I was going to do it, five days later, I launched my show <laughs> and it was just me. I didn't have guests. And I just talked about cuckolding and I didn't know anybody was listening for the longest time. I did it for almost a year and didn't know anybody was listening. I got my, my stats from my platform and I didn't know what to compare it to. So I was like, is that good? Like, I don't know. It wasn't until uh, like a year of doing the show that I finally got other stats and I looked at it and I was like, oh, damn, there's actually a lot of people listening. <laughs> and so I had no idea. And I was like, oh, my God. And then I started a, a Patreon so people could support me. And that was the first time I monetized it. And I really honestly didn't feel comfortable with that. But it took me like a year until I felt comfortable with actually accepting money for for doing this. And so then I... I was like, well, I, I'm going to take a chance and quit my day job. And that was a big decision for me because mm -hmm. um, I had been in my career for like 18 years. And I was like, well, fuck, I'm just going to do it. So <laughs> then I then I, I stopped doing that. I ended up full time working on the podcast and I have not looked back since. It's been just so much fun. The podcast ke keeps growing and growing. Like I checked it today. I can't even believe it. It's in the top 0.5% in the fucking world. I'm like, how did that happen? My little show. I'm just talking about cuckolding. <laughs> so it's popular. <laughs> I mean, that's amazing. So how often do you put out episodes? Every two weeks. And then... I mean, how, like, what do you, what is each show like? Is it, do you have guests on some? Is it somewhere you just talk? Like, how do you, because this is a pretty niche experience. So like, how do you find the material to have a bi-weekly podcast about it? Like, what do yeah, you, yeah, that's, what do you, explore? in the beginning, I was like, what, how, how, how am I going to not run out of stuff? Like, I don't know how I'm yeah. going to do this. And, um, but it's been great. I have not run out of material at all. <laughs> Um, I have, I did eventually after the first year start bringing on guests, which I was terrified because I'm like, it actually takes a lot of skill to be the host. And so, um, but I'm better at it now and I've had some really great guests on the show. So that's been fun, but I also do do shows where it's just me talking. I'll talk about various things like, you know, some are fun things like ultimate cuckolding fantasies and some really tackle the tough things like that incredible amount of shame and guilt and fear that a lot of cucks feel about for wanting this kind of relationship. So diving into stuff like that. So it's really, it's a myriad of topics. Mm -hmm. If this is something that like one of my listeners is interested in exploring, what tips would you give to bring this kind of lifestyle up with their partner? Yeah. So, okay. It's, 
usually like a husband who brings it up to his wife. And if he has the courage to, a lot of them don't. But he usually makes a big mistake by actually just saying like, I really want you to fuck some other dudes. And she's like, what? Like, what? Where did that come from? Where did that come from? That's out of the blue. (laughs) Yeah. And then women, of course, they're like, well, you want me to sleep with other guys? You don't love me? Like, you you know, that makes no sense. And and then they also think that this is also a sneaky way for them, those their husband to sleep with other women like they come up with all of these ideas. So it doesn't usually end well when they bring it up like that. If you're going to bring it up to your partner, please do so in a way that talks about it more as this gift that you're giving her and not so much as like, I want you to be my personal porn star for this specific scene and it has to look like this and his dick must be this big and he must be this tall and only if I think he's good looking and, you know, that kind of thing. But actually portraying it as, okay, this is your opportunity to have this sexual exploration like your mom did, you know, like to be able to go and have these other experiences in addition to this loving, committed uh relationship that you already have together. And in fact, it's going to make it even better. So talking about those things instead of just, I want to fuck, I want you to fuck another dude and I want to watch. <laughs> just do that instead. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so the, the approach is everything. Yes. So you launched Venus Connections dating service. So tell us about that and what prompted you to begin that. Okay. So A lot of people just assume that I started that as a business venture to be successful and stuff like that. That is not how it started. I wanted, desperately wanted somebody to come up with this for so long. And I was so frustrated that it didn't exist. So it's a matchmaking service for singles looking for a cuckolding relationship, a real relationship, not just fantasy stuff. And I was so frustrated. I got to the point where I got so pissed off that I was just like, bitching at my friends about it. And they were like, what, why didn't you just do it? And I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to do it. And then like a week later I launched it. And, but I did it differently um, than usual dating kind of apps. I wanted this to be completely private. And that's really important because a lot of people want a, a lot of discretion when it comes to this. And there's all sorts of problems with dating online. And I just didn't want women to have to go through that or men. Um, and so I, it, I made it so that it is, uh, you buy a membership online and then you fill out a de- very detailed questionnaire. You do courses. Everyone has to do courses, the men and the women. They learn about cuckolding relationships. They learn about each other's fears, common fears, stumbling blocks along the way, strategies when it comes to dating, that kind of stuff. They're going to learn about it. And then they have an actual interview with me, a Zoom interview with me where I can talk to them more about realistic expectations, what they're looking for, all that kind of stuff. And then after that, they don't do anything. They just wait. And if I have a match for them, then I will email them and let them know. And they're all blind dates. They're all virtual blind dates. So they know nothing about them going into it, which most people nowadays are like, that's fucking scary. (laughs) Yeah. But it works out great. It really does. And it's a very safe place for women because you're not committed to an in-person dinner date with somebody you don't know. And the women don't have to, you know, sort through all these fucking people because it is a private site and you have to do courses and you have to pay for membership. It weeds out all these fuckers that really are not serious about it. So it Mm. ends up being like a good group of, of members who are really serious about wanting this a kind of relationship. And re- recently I just found out one of my couples that I introduced are getting married. I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. I was going to actually ask you, um, if you had any successful matches that came out of this, but I guess you just answered that question. Yeah. I was thrilled, especially because, I mean, it's very difficult with matchmaking in this kind of arena because there's so many more men interested in it than women. So single ladies who are listening, if, if there are any listening to the show, watching the show, let only, me tell only you. Only 4%. <laughs> 4%. Okay. You 4%. Let me tell you, if you want this kind of relationship, holy fuck, you have a lot of options. Okay. <laughs> so on your website, you have a page of cuckoldry resources, including cuckolding friendly therapists. 
Um, we talk a lot on this podcast about therapy and how it's fine, hard to find therapists that are sex work friendly. So did you personally have a bad experience with a therapist who wanted to put down or discourage your lifestyle? Or did you just see that there was a need for people who understood that this was a lifestyle and not necessarily like a problem that had to be fixed? That's a great question. I personally have not had that experience, but I have heard of so many people who have. And I think this is really, really damaging, especially for these guys who carry this incredible amount of shame regarding this fantasy that really they need to work through. And to be shamed by your, you know, therapist by this is just shit. It's shit. So it was actually Dr. David Lay who gave me that list, um, put me through to that list of, of uh, kink-friendly uh, therapists. And um, he is a therapist himself, and, and he's part of the Sexual Health Alliance Network. And they are a group of folks who train um, these uh, sexual health practitioners about um, the best sexual health practices and educate them and everything like that, which I think is amazing. So there's people really trying to educate people about different sexual practices and stuff like that. So they don't um, kind of make people feel shame about what they're into. Um, and so it's, it's, that's a wonderful resource to have. And I'm super glad that we're heading in that direction. Like the work is getting done where, you know, people are learning because Dr. David Lay wrote the book Insatiable Wives. That's the book on cuckolding. And, and he goes into great detail about it, but um, he said that he wrote it because he heard about this kind of lifestyle or marriage and he thought it would be detrimental. He just assumed it would be detrimental. Like it can't, it can't be healthy. And then he went and talked to couples who are in this kind of relationship and he realized, Oh shit, like it's exactly, actually really healthy. So then he actually dove in and wrote like a big ass book about it. And it's really good. Yeah. And then for those of you who are curious to learn more about um, Dr. Lay and also Dr. Lay Miller, who, uh, Venus brought up, I have interviewed both of them for my podcast. So if you guys go back into my, um, episodes, you can find my interviews with them. They're really interesting. And then also if you want to learn more about the sexual health Alliance, which is a really great resource, um, you can go to sexualhealthalliance.com. Just wanted to throw that out there for people who want to learn more. So, well, Venus, thank you so much. This has been really interesting and very eye-opening. Um, is there anything else that you just want to let people know about cuckolding that you feel like we maybe didn't cover in this episode? Um, I just want to go back to what I said earlier about the stereotype around cucks being weak and pathetic. I just want people to walk away with this to know that um, you don't have to be afraid of that word, that label, cuck. I know a lot of stags who call themselves a stag because they don't like the word cuck and, I, the, all, and all the stigma that goes along with that. But just know that um, that cucks are very strong, very amazing people, and they make the, the best partners. So um, if people could just understand that and if women could know that, you know what, there's this amazing kind of relationship that is about you and your sexuality and it's beautiful and like that in itself is a gift. All you have to do is ask for it. Just say, I want that. That's all you have to do. <laughs> And you get it. So there you go. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Can you tell everybody where they can find you online and specifically um, your podcast? Yeah, sure. So the podcast is called the Venus Cockledress Podcast. And uh, you can learn more about everything on my website, venuscuckledress.com. And um, you can find me on Twitter. My handle is at V. Fantastic. And you guys can find me on Instagram and on Twitter at Holly Randall. Um, go to hollylinks.com for links to all of uh, my various social media platforms as websites. And obviously, if you want to support this podcast, I always encourage you to go join patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered, where you not only get early releases of these interviews, live streams, but also access to my fine art photography behind the scenes and so much more. There's a lot of stuff that I put out on that platform. So thank you guys so much for watching. Venus, again, thank you so much for your time. Thank and you. I will see all of you next week.